In the frosty embrace of winter 2021, gaming fans were treated to an avalanche of excitement with lots of great game releases. We saw the release of Endwalker, the long-awaited expansion for the massively popular MMO Final Fantasy XIV. Alongside this, we got Disco Elysium Definitive Edition, drawing players into its mesmerizing world of mystery and intrigue. We also saw the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy remakes, which I would talk about, but I don't really want to resurface my buried PTSD on that one. And let's not forget about the famous Winter Steam Sale, where gamers everywhere filled their virtual stockings on discounts and offers. Winter 2021 was an exciting time for gamers. However, the gaming landscape held more than just re-releases and Steam sales. We saw the birth of a completely new genre. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to discuss the success of Vampire Survivors. We'll take a look at and see where the inspiration for the game originated from and later, I'll offer some similar game recommendations if you're looking for more enemy melting action. First released by developer Luca Galante on the Google Play Store and Android in May 2021, Vampire Survivors didn't really take off at the time. Following this, the developer quickly gave up on this version and moved to PC development where the game was released in October 2021 on itch.io. In an interview, Luca stated that he was hoping for around maybe 100 players to play it and leave a comment, but that didn't happen, but Luca didn't give up. Following this second failure, Luca released the game on Steam where it saw a meteoric rise in popularity and by February 2022, Vampire Survivors became a big name and saw over 77,000 consecutive players, a considerable improvement over its itch.io release. At the time of writing this, Vampire Survivors sits at an overwhelmingly positive on Steam with over 191,000 positive reviews and went on to win multiple awards over its lifespan including a BAFTA in 2023 for Best Game and Best Game Design. The success of Vampire Survivors was huge, it's always great to see a game made by a small team or a single developer gain popularity, and in the case of Vampire Survivors, it sparked an entirely new genre. Some people refer to it as survivor-likes, playing off the Souls-like genre, which was of course inspired by From Software's Dark Souls series. Others are calling it Bullet Heaven, which takes the bullet hell genre of games like Toho, The Binding of Isaac, or Enter the Gungeon, and flips it on its head. But what is it about Vampire Survivors that made it such a hit? Where did it come from in the first place, and what's coming next? Until recently, I had never given this game a try, and now I realise what I was missing out on. From the moment I stepped foot into the Mad Forest, the game's first level, I understood why Vampire Survivors captured so many players' hearts, leaving them and me utterly addicted and wanting for more. Just one more attempt, one more run, one more try, I couldn't put it down. So what was the source of inspiration for this award-winning game, you might wonder? Was it the pioneer of its genre? Interestingly enough, the creator of Vampire Survivors revealed in an interview that the inspiration actually stemmed from an Android-only mobile game called Magic Survival, which released earlier in the same year in February 2021. Magic Survival bid significant resemblance to Vampire Survivors and effectively laid the groundwork for the triumph of upcoming games in this emerging and niche genre. So join me as we take a look at the game which gave rise to Vampire Survivors and the bullet head genre. While it may have some improvements in terms of its overall presentation and polish, Magic Survival manages to deliver a remarkably fun experience, offering a diverse array of items, synergies, characters, levels, and progression systems. It has a surprisingly large amount of content to play with, and I highly recommend giving this one a go, even if it's just so you can say that you played the first Survivor-like. The premise is similar to other games of the genre. You pick your character and your stage, and you get thrown into waves of escalating enemies, grabbing items to augment your build and playstyle as you go. As you get stronger by opening chests, leveling up, and picking the right synergies, you're presented with a pretty huge variety of magic spells, each with their own attack pattern and style of gameplay. For example, you've got the Thunderstorm ability which blasts lightning bolts from the sky, and the Meteor ability which rains down hellfire on any unsuspecting enemies in your way. After you've leveled up enough, you're offered the ability to fuse two max level spells together, creating an entirely new and stronger ability. Fusing Thunderstorm and Meteor together strengthens your Thunderstorms and makes them bigger and more powerful. There are a staggering amount of these fused abilities which add a lot of fun and depth to the gameplay as you'll always be trying to remember what abilities combine together and give you strategic depth when planning your build. Magic Survival also provides the player with meta out-of-game progression systems too, offering the ability to unlock new characters and feature a permanent stat upgrade system, which allows you to increase your chances in future runs. Think of it a bit like the Paragon system from the Diablo series. Magic Survival falls short in some aspects, particularly when it comes to enemy variety. The game offers 8 different enemy types, which when we compare that to Vampire Survivors, offers nearly 200 different enemy varieties. Magic Survival allows you to play as different characters and unlock them as you go using coins earned in runs and a selection of levels to fight your way through. There are definitely some things that could be improved with Magic Survival, and it doesn't quite hit the mark in terms of graphics, sound design and UI, and these are pretty basic and underwhelming, but I won't complain too much about that given that this is a fairly outdated free mobile game. One thing I did notice specifically was that during the level up process, the choices of upgrades given to 
me were completely random and occasionally offered upgrades for items I hadn't even acquired yet. It's possible that this was a deliberate design choice to maintain a sense of randomness and diversity through the gameplay, but I found hitting that perfect build a lot harder to do than it would be in Vampire Survivors. Overall, Magic Survival is a very interesting take and truly revolutionised the bullet hell genre in its own unique way. But really, this just felt like an appetiser for what Vampire Survivors expanded upon and transformed into an incredibly addictive and captivating experience. So, now that we've dived into the prodigal predecessor, it's time to look at Vampire Survivors itself. What is it about this little gem that makes it so fun and addictive to play? The premise of Vampire Survivors is similar to Magic Survival. You start off with a single weapon and you kill progressively stronger enemies in a wave-based format until either you die or you win. Along the way, you gather items for your build by grabbing chests or selecting from a choice of three items each time you level up. You can have a total of six weapons and six support items for a total of 12. When you grab an item you've already got, the item is leveled up into a stronger variant. Once a weapon hits maximum level and you own the correct support item, you can evolve your weapon into a new, more powerful version. These evolved weapons are paramount to survival at the higher levels of the game, and usually you'll be aiming for that perfect build using your 12 slots to achieve maximum synergy and power. To complement the evolution system, the game allows you to fuse some items together, creating a more powerful version of two items, and giving you back a weapon slot for even more weapon choices. This system creates an interesting synergistic approach to creating your build, and requires knowledge of items and their favourable combinations, and provides an interesting progression system outside of the game's mechanics to keep players addicted and entertained. Vampire Survivors features a variety of different stages to test your builds and provides a lot of little quality of life features that Magic Survival didn't. For example, when unlocked, the pause screen shows a map of the area with its items, secrets and points of interest, so you always know what you're looking for, and you can also find a grimoire showing you which items synergize together, so you always know what you need to build towards and you don't have to open up a wiki or anything like that. Vampire Survivors offers a whopping 57 different characters if you own the two DLC packs, each with their own different strengths and weaknesses allowing you to build into specific archetypes more easily. The stylized 8-bit graphics look gorgeous, and each enemy looks and acts differently to keep things looking and feeling fresh and exciting. The weapon effects also look great, and each map has its own unique look, feel, and charm. However, where I think Vampire Survivors excels is in its amazing sound design. The soundtrack is incredible, and it features a different theme for each stage. This, combined with small gameplay changes each time, make each stage feel unique and interesting. For example, Stage 1 contains plant enemies, which surround you to create an arena you need to escape from, and Stage 3 offers train tracks with carts that you can activate to crush your foes. When enemies are killed, they let off a satisfying popping sound, which adds to the weight and feel of the gameplay, especially when you're in the late game and killing tens of thousands of enemies at once. It almost reminds me of playing Bloom's Tower Defense, but instead of controlling an immobile tower, you pilot a vampire combine harvester of death, which is pretty awesome. You start off as a measly little wizard firing single shots out of your wand and within 30 minutes you become so powerful that it's hard to even see where you are among the chaos that you're causing. Using the knowledge gained in your last run allows you to progress slightly further in your next run and sets up an interesting gameplay loop to keep you entertained and engaged. You get that same feeling of accomplishment and progression that you get when playing an MMO like RuneScape or an idle game like Cookie Clicker but in quick, short bursts with randomised progression. Vampire Survivors also features a roguelike progression system inspired by Magic Survival which allows you to upgrade your stats permanently to allow for a long-term progression system between runs. There's also a variety of different game modes to play and beat, including the hyper mode which makes enemies both stronger and faster, an inverse mode which turns the stage upside down, and an endless mode to show off your amazing builds. The game also features an arcana system which modifies the gameplay mechanics in a specific way, such as removing XP drops or changing the way certain weapons work. It's systems like this that keep the player engaged and enjoying the game even after hundreds of hours and keeps players coming back. Overall, Vampire Survivors is an incredible indie gem which took the world by storm, building on Magic Survival to create an entirely new genre. Vampire Survivors became so successful that it released two DLC packs which offer a slew of new content to play, unlock and master, and even now we're seeing new games copying this bullet heaven style. Clones of Vampire Survivors which in itself is a clone of Magic Survival. So we've had a look at Vampire Survivors and the history of the genre, but what else is there in the realm of bullet heaven games? Over the last few months especially, there have been quite a few releases with similar mechanics and gameplay. There are just too many to talk about in this video, but I do have some suggestions if you're looking for more gameplay to scratch that vampire survivor itch. First up, we've got Holocure, a vampire survivor's clone using cutesy anime graphics and characters. Don't be fooled by its cute appearance. Holocure offers a surprising amount of challenge and was a fully enjoyable experience, especially considering that it's free. 
You can check it out on itch.io, which I've left a link to in the description of the video if you're interested. Holocure features a slew of popular VTubers as its character roster, and is jam-packed with tie-ins from the Hololive fandom, including characters, easter eggs, and in-jokes. I must admit, I'm not familiar with the Hololive fandom, but even so, I found myself enjoying this game regardless. Personally, among the various Bullet Heaven games I played while writing this, I would have to say that Holocure stood out as the second most enjoyable after Vampire Survivors. The amazing 8-bit soundtrack is disgustingly catchy and features remixes of popular Holocure songs. I'd barely even heard of the Hololive scene before this, but even so, I had the soundtrack to this game stuck in my head for days after playing. Using similar gameplay to both Vampire Survivors and Magic Survival, Holocure incorporates features and systems like leveling up by collecting XP dropped by enemies, larger and uncommon boss monsters, item synergies, and the ability to awaken your weapons at maximum level. You can even combine two maximum level weapons together to create a collab weapon, which creates a new, stronger weapon variant. This is similar to the weapon evolution system from Vampire Survivors. Holocure offers a unique twist by including an anvil which drops randomly in the world and gives you the ability to upgrade an item even further using holo coins, a meta currency which drops in the game and persists between runs. Spending holo coins to upgrade items on the anvil is not a guaranteed process and it can fail. This is a system remnant of Black Desert Online, Maple Story, or Lost Ark, and works pretty well for a game that isn't multiplayer or pay to win. Additionally, in Holocure, you'll encounter distinctively unique waves of enemies between rounds, which function similarly to the plant rounds in Vampire Survivors. However, this time, there's a lot more variety, keeping you constantly on the move. When combined with the awesome soundtrack, this made me feel like I was playing a rhythm game and has you dodging skeleton shield walls and giant clock creatures to the beat of the music, and had me feeling like I was playing something like Crypt of the Necrodancer. Holocure also features a unique aiming system, which allows you to choose between aiming in the direction you're moving or by splitting the two and controlling the direction of your attacks with the mouse and movement with the keyboard. To be honest, I'm pretty surprised that the addition of manual aiming doesn't completely break the game's difficulty level, but it works well and adds a good amount of variety to the gameplay. Holocure is not a walk in the park, even with manual aim turned on. It did make the game more interactive, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, considering how ridiculously powerful you get in Vampire Survivors by the end. I did kind of miss playing with a controller in one hand and a beer in the other. The character unlock system also mixes things up by having a unique gacha style character system, which allows you to open in-game loot boxes paid for with earnable holo coins to pull characters. Considering the Japanese undertones, this is not unexpected at all, and seeing as it's free, this system is great. The only thing really missing from this iteration of the genre for me was the popping enemy sounds, which was so satisfying from Vampire Survivors. While the soundtrack absolutely kicks ass, the actual sound effects are nothing to write home about. This by no means is a bad thing, but I think they could have gone above and beyond and made killing enemies really satisfying, like Vampire Survivors manages to do. Holocure features is a decent amount of stages and a variety of game modes such as endless mode, time mode and hardcore mode to keep you engaged. Overall, considering this one is absolutely free and plays similarly to Vampire Survivors, I can't imagine you'd like this one and not the other, so it's a thumbs up from me. If you want to change from the fantasy spell slinging style, you could try out Brotato, a top-down shooter with a similar art style to The Binding of Isaac. And no, this game wasn't released by Edward McMillan. I did double check. Brotato offers a similar gameplay loop to the other games on this list and pits you against increasing waves of enemies with a more modern set of weaponry. The game features features a variety of handguns, automatic rifles, rocket launchers, shotguns, turrets, and even a handful of melee weapons such as axes, drills, and chainsaws. It's a breath of fresh air compared to some of the other high fantasy titles we've already talked about, and offers a more modern charm while keeping a lot of the systems we know and love intact. Brotato allows you to upgrade your guns by purchasing two of the same gun type from the shop to create a better version of that item. Better items output more firepower and damage to kill your enemies faster, creating that familiar gameplay loop of kill enemies faster to kill enemies faster. Between shop runs, you'll encounter waves of varying enemies and collecting what the game calls materials, which basically act like experience from the other games. Materials allow you to purchase new items and perks from the shop. While the in-game progression systems are very similar, Protato feels more interactive than Vampire Survivors in between rounds and a bit like an auto-battler, as you'll be trying to spend every single last material that you gather, and you can re-roll shop inventory using materials, so it's also definitely worth trying to min-max that item stack. The melee system is particularly interesting, as other Bullet Heaven games haven't really explored this much from what I played. You can go entirely melee-focused if you want to, and it feels feels really rewarding to smack the ever-loving crap out of anything in your way, especially when you've got a giant electrified bat. And last up, we've got yet another Zombie Survivors. I like the name of this one as it feels like a play on the zombie survival genre and the survival-like genre. This one is a more gritty and modern rendition of Vampire Survivors, and has you playing as a squad of soldiers up against the undead horde. Yet another Zombie Survivors feels a lot like that old Flash game series, The Last Stand.
Wasteland. As you kill zombies, you collect gold and gems from their fleshy corpses. Gold is the experience point system of yet another zombie survivors and levels you up as you collect more. Sometimes you'll find diamonds dropped by boss monsters which give you even more experience. As you collect experience and level up, you're offered upgrades for whichever characters you've selected to be in your squad. So, for example, if you've selected to have the tank in your squad, you'll be offered shotguns and spinning saws. The engineer, on the other hand, boasts electric tasers and static turrets which get plopped down every few seconds. Every now and then you'll get a notification pointing towards a survivor on the map, which allows you to save them and add a new squad member to your team, changing your in-game avatar as you go. This is a nice little addition and adds a nice little visual indicator showing your strength and progression in-game. It's also a nice change to be able to play as a small squad of survivors, rather than one godlike being like the other games on this list. The gunplay feels great in this game and killing zombies was very satisfying, although it was a little bit difficult for me to see what was going on sometimes because everything looks very similar and has that dark, gritty, realistic effect which looks good but makes it more tricky to see sometimes, comparing to the bright, colourful graphics of the other games on this list. The graphics and sound effects come together well to create a great gameplay experience and the soundtrack has awesome heavy metal beats. The game also features an out-of-game progression system in the form of permanent unlocks which can be purchased using currency earned in the game. These offer bonuses similar to what we've seen in the other games and they increase your damage or give you more health and so on. Yet Another Zombie Survivors doesn't have a large amount of content at the moment and is still early access on Steam. But this one is definitely shaping up to be a good entry to the genre and is definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something a bit different to the other games on this list. The developers have promised more characters, maps and content as it progresses out of early access, so keep your eyes peeled for this one. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed our quick look at some of the inspirations and influences which evolved the bullet heaven genre over the last few months. It's great to be able to go back and see where it all started with Magic Survival, and it's very easy to see the influences both Magic Survival and Vampire Survivors had on the genre as a whole, with new and exciting and different games coming out all the time with similarities between the two. I've got a close eye on what this genre holds going forward and I'm excited to try out more of these games in the future. Vampire Survivors is an incredibly addictive and satisfying experience, so if you've never tried it, I definitely recommend you give it a go. And if you're looking for more, there's definitely plenty of other titles, including ones that I haven't even mentioned in this video that'll keep you entertained for hundreds of hours. I'd love to know what you guys think, so be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what your favourite game of the genre is. Be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And until next time, happy vampire slaying.